Hi lads, today's lesson is about hardwood and softwood and deciduous versus coniferous trees. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about how trees or trees are identified and how they are grouped then based on that identification and how that grouping then goes on to affect the type of timber that each different tree type provides and more importantly the timber that we want to use then is affected as well because it reacts in different ways depending whether you're using hardwood or softwoods and our first port of call I suppose when it comes to being a woodworker or trying to learn to do carpentry is to understand how to work with the wood and in understanding how to work with the wood we need to know how it was grown where it comes from and any other relevant information so what I want you to do today is using your woodwork copy and if you haven't that at home, use a page. I have just a page set up here where I'm going to divide the page in half down the middle. And I'm going to put everything about deciduous trees on the left and everything about coniferous trees on the right. And then you're going to keep that page. It's going to be a study page, a notes page. So we're creating a notes page here. Now, I want you to make your notes page as interesting as possible. And what I mean by that is I don't want it very boring, as in black biro, pencil sketch, job done. I want colour, I want you to enhance it. We're going to try and make it look good because when you spend time adding um, sketches and colour and detail and interest to a page, uh, well, one, it just looks nicer. That's the first thing and you can be proud of your work. But secondly, it'll also help you remember it and it helps you learn it. Uh, I could have taught this module or this, this section of the book just by putting up a load of PowerPoints and talking about them and then giving you a copy of the PowerPoint. But... It isn't necessarily the best way for everybody to learn. Whereas this is more likely to stay in your mind because of it. So if we're ready to go, so you should have a page, as I said already there, set up with deciduous and coniferous uh, written on it. And if you haven't that at this stage, just pause the lesson just here and have a go at organizing that for yourself. So blank page. And at the heading at the top, I have deciduous and I have coniferous on the right. Now, it's going to feel like I'm saying those words over and over and over again for the next few minutes. And yeah, I will be and I will feel weird saying them over and over again. However, the more I say them, the more you read them, the more you write them, the more likely you are to learn them and learn the spelling in particular. A lot of you always ask coming into tests, oh, is, is spelling important? And spelling is always important. Without spelling, we don't understand what somebody's trying to communicate. So that is important. Um, so look at it there, deciduous, D-E-C-I-D-U-O-U-S, coniferous, C-O-N-I-F-E-R-O-U-S, okay, coniferous, look at the word, it's a key word, these are all key words, words we need to know. Now, I'm going to start off by drawing the general shape of each tree, okay, and I'm not going to talk yet about how they look. I'm not going to talk about evergreen. I'm not going to talk about losing leaves just yet. I'm just going to draw the shape. Now, in the middle of the summer, we're going to talk about for the moment or while coming into the autumn. If you had a deciduous tree outside in your yard or outside in your garden, or maybe you walk for a walk and you see a deciduous tree, you will see a particular type of shape associated with it. First of all, you will see a trunk. Okay which you might be saying in your head now, actually we see that in every tremus. But this trunk is slightly different because the trunk kind of disappears fairly quickly. And when the tree is in full leaf, we generally see this kind of shape of a tree. Now, it doesn't matter what way I draw that because a tree's, no tree is identical, just like yourselves, they're all different. But this might jog a memory in you. Back when you were four and five, most of you, if you're asked to draw a tree, that's what you would have drawn. Some of you would have went a step further after that and you would have kind of continued on up along here and you would have started drawing off branches. Okay, because you know that without branches, there are no leaves. All right. And all of those branches, when you were drawing them, because quite rightly, when you went on nature walks with your class and with your mum and your daddy and everything, and you collected conquerors and you did all that kind of fun stuff when you were small. By the way, you can still do that when you're older. Just people don't, don't seem to think that... It's, it's as valuable an activity. Trust me, it is. But anyway, you saw that it had branches, so you came back into primary school and you drew a little tree like that. And you were dead proud of yourself. Even though in reality, 
the tree, if I was to paint it or do something far more particular, it would look very, very different to that. However, I have drawn the outline of what a deciduous tree looks like. And if I was asked in my junior cert exam to draw the outline, the shape, or draw a deciduous tree, my first protocol, my first job is to create that curved, round, broad shape. Now that's very important, that shape, okay? And if I was to draw a little mini version of this, I would draw it like that. That's effectively the shape of a deciduous tree, okay? Now, let's park deciduous for a minute and we'll go over to coniferous, okay? And before I ever draw coniferous, I am now going to go back to this idea of evergreen versus lose their leaves. We know deciduous trees, while in the summer and in autumn, you learnt in your nature in primary school, we know that those trees lose their leaves in winter. The leaves turn a different colour. We get those lovely autumnal reds and oranges and yellows. They fall off. Um, and as a result, we're left with effectively what I've drawn there, but without the cloud bit, if that makes sense. You just see the branches. Whereas the coniferous trees are what are considered evergreen trees. Okay. And a coniferous tree, if I said to you, okay, draw a tree, say you're five or six, I said, draw a tree, you would have drawn that. But if I went ahead and said, no, 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 draw me a tree kind of like your Christmas tree, draw a Christmas tree, you'd draw a very different thing. You would probably draw something like this. In fact, I know you would, because that's what you drew for me at Christmas. When we went to make Christmas decorations out of wood, you effectively drew that shape. Now, that shape though, if I was to highlight it and look at it and think about it, okay, is this kind of triangular shape, isn't it? That's a coniferous tree, there it is. It's a kind of a triangle shape. But we also know in reality that that shape is round. So it's more like a cone. Now, I'm hoping the penny's dropping there for some of you. Because cones and cone shapes, right? Look at it. It's round shapes like an ice cream. If it turns upside down to be an ice cream cone. But that cone shape, let's look at our word up here at the top. Let me highlight it. The start of coniferous is the start of the word cone. Okay, and that's how you're going to remember it. And that's how you're going to know it. And that's kind of where it comes from. A coniferous tree has a cone-like shape. This triangular shape. This is the triangle you would have done in primary school. Okay. And if I was to draw a little mini version again. So the symbol. Say you're inside in your exam now next summer. The symbol I would like to see for a coniferous tree is literally that. That would do me. Now, in order to kind of connect this in to where I am with the deciduous over here. I want to, yes, add a trunk. Because every tree has a trunk. And to be honest, it's the, this is the trunk that we're interested in. But I also want to talk a little bit about the branches and I want to go back to Christmas time. And at Christmas, you will have noticed that the branches of a Christmas tree all come from the trunk. So in other words, the trunk continues on up through the tree. Okay. Whereas over here, our trunk gets broken up into deciduous. Right. So it continues on up through the trunk of the tree and the branches tend to what we call radiate out from the trunk. Now that's going to be very important down the line when we talk about hardwood and softwood timber and the fact that timber that comes from coniferous trees is softwood but also it tends to be very knotty. Now I'm not going to tell you why that is yet because I'm going to keep that as a question. You can be thinking about it. Why in the name of God is this timber more knotty than hardwood timber? Hmm. Something to consider. But the branches radiate out from the central trunk. Now so that's just a little bit about deciduous versus coniferous for a minute. Now we need to start going in and taking detail, but before I do, I might as well do what we would have done in primary school, which is add a little bit of color to all our sketches. Why not? Okay. Sketch, drawing, remember what are they? They are not supposed to be perfect. And I don't mind if they're not perfect, but they should represent the item or the issue or the job it is that we are talking about. So I'm just going to add a little bit of colour and what was a kind of a boring, not the most perfect drawing in the world, now suddenly becomes a little bit more interesting and as a result you end up more proud of your drawing. 
but also it helps you remember us because we're coloring, we're looking and say to yourself while you're coloring, while you're looking, while you're drawing, while you're shading, whatever it is that you're doing at any point in any question, in any day, always say to yourself, why am I coloring this while you're doing it? Or what's what's important about this that she's getting me to do all this business to it? OK, what's important is the shape. What's important is what it represents. Um, and that these are two very different tree types. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit while I'm coloring about tree types. We've I started off mentioned deciduous and coniferous as if you knew already what that was. And I assume that you kind of did. But at the same time, I'm sure there's somebody there that didn't. A deciduous tree is a tree that loses leaves in winter. A coniferous tree is a tree that keeps its leaves in winter. OK. Um, generally, deciduous trees are rounded in shape. And their branches radiate off of other branches from each other. So in other words, they're all going off like this in different directions. Whereas a coniferous tree, we said it earlier on, they all radiate from that trunk. OK, now, so that looks a little bit better than it looked a while ago. Put a colour onto our deciduous tree. Now, I'm going to actually do some reds and oranges just kind of randomly on my deciduous tree because I want to you to remember that, OK, yes, a deciduous tree or a broadleaf tree or a tree that loses its leaves will have big chunks of leaves in it all through the summer. But if I put these colours on it at this stage and indicate it in this, sorry, the autumn, I already said spring, in the springtime, it'll help you remember that, yeah, these guys, they're the ones that lose their leaves. They change colour and then they lose their leaves. So that's really my only reasoning for using those colours there. There's still be a bit of green, mind you. And it's only just look little patches of colour. It's all I want. I'm not perfectionist. This isn't the art class. Might be nice if it was, but it isn't. Okay. So let's see other bits of orange. So there we go. Now. Hopefully those two diagrams, when you go back to study this page at a glance, should tell you exactly what this is all about and it should trigger a memory in you when you see those drawings. Now let's start adding the information though. So deciduous trees down here on the left. Now the first thing is these, um, actually, hang on now before I start, put down my little marker points. So. First thing I need to know about a deciduous tree or I need to write down. And again, think of how you're going to write this, how you're going to make it look good. Um, I need to write that um, oh my God, how are it gives us hardwood timber, I suppose, would be the first one, really. I'm trying to figure out now what order to put these in would be best. So bear with me there for just a minute. Um, I'll do with the most important one. They lose their leaves in, leaves in winter. So deciduous trees lose their leaves in winter. Now, I would like you to also write in capitals. Okay, we haven't done much note taking in school up to this point because of the fact that you were picking your subjects and the student teacher and so on. But I would like you to write in capitals and I do have a reason for that. Um, and apart from the fact that it's naturally tidier, the real reason for me is that it makes you write slower and it helps you remember it. And it also looks better at the end. And we're, to be honest, we're creating more of a little poster here and rather than just a page of notes. Now, so what I'm going to do each time, anything I say about deciduous trees, generally the opposite is going to be true for coniferous. So if deciduous trees lose their leaves in winter, coniferous trees, and again, write the words, learn off the spelling, C-O-N-I-F-E-R-O-U-S, coniferous trees, keep their leaves in winter. Now, how are you going to remember that? Well, Coniferous. I said to you, it is similar to the Christmas tree in shape. Oh, it's not just similar. It is the Christmas tree shape, right? And because it's the Christmas tree shape, Christmas, coniferous, it's a similar word, both begin with C. But also, I don't think I have ever seen a Christmas tree in anybody's house that was bare of leaves. 
Now, maybe I suppose if you left it up to the middle of January, maybe some of you still have your Christmas trees up at this stage on the, what day is it? 14th of January, maybe you have, and if you do, fine. Um, but I'm pretty sure at this stage it's probably bare, but that's only because it's, it's after being cut down. It's effectively dying and the leaves are dying and falling off. But in reality, when that tree was bought, that brand new lovely tree was just cut fresh in the forest in the middle of November or December probably, it had loads of leaves. So that's how I remember it, Christmas tree. Your Christmas tree had leaves. Therefore, your Christmas tree was a coniferous tree. Okay, so that's the first point and it's very, very important. Now, this is the one though that's important for us. Um, I'm gonna leave a line in between each point. I just hope I'm gonna fit everything in here now. Um, next one, they give us hardwood timber. Which I suppose is a strange way of putting it. But what I mean is they produce hardwood timber, but I think produce is nearly the one word as well. Hardwood, this is where I shouldn't talk as I'm right now in order to make a mistake there. It was hardwood timber, H-A-R-D-W-O-O-D. I'm just going to write in the word again in here. H-A-R-D-W-O-O-D. Okay. Just because my thing is wrong and I hate typics, by the way. I hate it. Anyway, they give us hardwood timber. Okay, so that's important. And over here then, remember I said the opposite is nearly always true. Coniferous trees, they give us, what do you think? Oh, I can hear you roaring there at the video. They give us softwood timber. So F-T-W-O-O-D, softwood timber. Okay, now, be careful here. Some people think hardwood and softwood, it just literally means one is hard and the other one is soft. It's, that's not just it. We will learn a hell of a lot more about that, but for the moment, that will do us. Now, I'm going to put in, though, a little, a little note on this, because there's two trees in the whole, well, there's probably more than two, but there's two that we need to worry about that, that are different, that don't follow these same rules fully. They follow them enough to get their, their, their name, but then they change. Um... There is one um, hardwood timber that actually keeps its leaves. And there is one softwood timber that loses its leaves. So I'm going to just add it in up here. Right? So we've already said deciduous give us hardwood. But the deciduous, right, and I'm going to put this in as a little note. Holly, would you believe it? Some of you will have had holly there over the Christmas. Okay. And you would have put it up in order to decorate your house and make your house look beautiful. I love a bit of holly myself. Um, and you may or may not have noticed that it was a quite a prickly piece of foliage. And it was the leaves that were prickly, but oh yeah, it had leaves. It was Christmas, it was the middle of winter, but it had leaves. But it is actually a hardwood timber, okay? So even though it keeps its leaves, that is the only difference it has from all the rest of the hardwood timbers. The timber it produces is still a hardwood. However, over on the other side of the line, there's a softwood or a coniferous tree. It's called larch. And it... C-E-P-T, why does that spell look wrong? It uh, loses its leaves in winter. Okay, so that's important. So there's our two little exceptions. And because they're exceptions, I'm highlighting them. I'm doing it with colored pencils because all my lovely highlighters and colored biros, I left them all in school. So colored pencils do the job too, still looks good. Right, moving along, and I'm gonna move a little bit quicker now because we've said a lot of these already within our sketch we just didn't write them down now so loser leaves winter they give us hardwood timber they have broad leaves now what does this mean 
I want you to look at your hand for a minute. I don't know where I have my hand is in the camera. Hang on, I've got up here. Oh yeah, oh God, yeah, it's very close with my hand. Anyway, your hand is broad, right? Broad leaves trees tend to have leaves that are close to hand shape and are quite flat and are quite wide. And that's what we call broad leaves, that kind of a wide tree leaf type. Um, whereas on the opposite side of the column, I want to start talking about Christmas again. You won't, you, you're probably all figuring out now why she spends her time talking about hardwood and softwood in, in January. Because back at Christmas, if you were the one that was charged with hoovering up the floor when those leaves started falling off the Christmas tree, you might have noticed that the leaves were like needles. They're horrible things actually when they get into a carpet. They have what we call needle. like needle like which is a weird kind of a word leaves now now that's for a very 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 important reason right uh, deciduous trees tend to grow in our country okay and what i mean by that is a country like ireland where it is rainy but it isn't terribly cold in the winter um gets a bit warmer in the summer it's a lovely temperate climate we never get very very hot and we never get very very cold the citrus trees love that coniferous trees on the other hand grow best up in what's called kind of the northern belt where the weather is cold the weather is bitterly cold in the winter and it snows a lot now there's a reason for their needle like leaves then those little thin little needle leaves that you see on the Christmas tree and that you hoovered up off the floor, if that was above in some northern, I don't know, Finland or somewhere like that, up in Lapland, let's, go, let's stick with the Christmas, and it was snowing outside and snowing and snowing and snowing, right? If the coniferous tree had big wide leaves like my hand, broad leaves, what would happen is that the snow would sit on top of that leaf and eventually the snow would weigh it down because snow is water, it's very heavy. The snow would weigh down that leaf and it would weigh it down so much that the leaf would break the branch and the branch would break off the tree. Before you know it, the tree can't live anymore because without leaves it can't live without branches. Okay, so those needle-like leaves are designed to stop snow lodging. Remember that word, we all say that word the minute we look out the window in, in December or January and we see about five snowflakes and we get terribly excited because we see five snowflakes and we say to ourselves, oh, it's snowing, it's snowing. And some adult comes in, there's always some misery, comes in and says, oh, but it's not lodging, right? And lodging means to sit or to stay. So it's not lodging on our needle-like leaves. However, broad leaves trees, if they got a huge pile of snow down on top of them, it would break down all the branches because all the leaves would weigh down the trees. And that's why coniferous trees are suited to north cold climates sort of like in Game of Thrones, above the wall, that kind of a climate. Um, and deciduous leaves, or deciduous trees are far suited, more suitable to our climate. So needle-like leaves, and let's write that in. All that I just said, like leaves. So, so the snow can't lodge on them. And weigh it down and I suppose break the branch okay and on the opposite side they have broad leaves so that's that one now moving along now life cycle and the time they grow for okay so again keeping my two columns keeping everything separate Deciduous trees are slow growing. Actually, they are very slow growing. I'm not like checking my camera. Let's see if I'm still on the camera. I'm not. I had a suspicion I was off it. That's pretty suspicion proof. To be true. Right, slow growing. Okay, they take an average of about a hundred years to grow. 
for maturity. In other words, to the point where the timber is useful for us. T-U-R-I-T-Y. Right? That is a long, long, long time. Okay, most of us don't even live to that age. Whereas these coniferous guys, they're fast growing. Full maturity. Is reached around 40 years okay now you should know that anyway because anytime I hand anyone a piece of timber or most of the time when I hand someone a piece of timber if I think they're gonna make a hames of it or damage it or, or, or not give it the care and respect it deserves. I tell them that even if it's softwood, that that timber has been around for at least 40 years. You know, what do you do? What are you, 12, 13, 14, something like that? Please don't damage it. Respect it, respect your elders. Okay, same thing with a tree. Don't ruin it. We have to wait another 40 years if you want to grow that little bit all over again. And the same is true in particular with the hardwood. Giving out a piece of hardwood, I'm half afraid to give it out. Because I say, oh my God, this has been around for around 100 years. Here I am going to give it to this, this whippersnapper who thinks he's going to chop it up into something. So you need to respect the timber and that's why you need to respect it. We have to wait another hundred years to grow one of them. Now, Ireland, we seem to be growing a hell of a lot more coniferous trees in Ireland in our, in our Irish forests, which isn't necessarily a good thing. But I'll get into that in another class. Um, and the reason we've been growing it in Ireland, they're not really suited to our climate. They're not really good for our climate at all. And even when you see forests of coniferous trees in Ireland, the habitats that they create are not really suitable for our kind of animals and our um, fauna and flora. But anyway, they do grow in Ireland. But the reason we've been growing them or the reason that they've been growing a hell of a lot of them is that fact. The fact that within 40 years, you will be able to harvest them, cut them down and use them and sell them and make money. Whereas if I decided today I was going to be a person that grows trees, I don't know what that word is. I don't know, is it a tree farmer? Maybe it is. But if I decided that and I'm going to grow hardwood trees, I can forget it because I will not be around. Well, maybe I will, but I will not be around to, 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 to make money out of that. So anyway, that's that one. Moving along then. So that is the slow growing. Now they have, and we already mentioned this above in the picture. They have large irregular branches that grow out from each other. So a broadleaf tree Irregular. That grow out from each other. And what I mean by that is one grows, another one grows out of it, another one grows out of that bit. And so on. Whereas the coniferous tree has small branches that generally grow from the trunk, that mostly grow from the trunk. You only get these teeny tiny little ones that grow outside of it. And the word I used for that there a minute ago was radiate, R-A-D-I-A-T-E, radiate. Okay, um, we're nearly there. Um, the broadleaf tree versus the coniferous tends to be symmetrical in shape. I nearly didn't fit that word in. It tends to be symmetrical with uh, kind of regular branches. Um, what's the opposite to symmetrical? I should know that, shouldn't I? Um, but, 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 let me think. What would you write? So, coniferous kind of tends to be symmetrical. Uh, 
Uh, okay. Goes in every direction. That'll do me for now. Mind you, still keeping that kind of general overall round shape. Okay. And are we there? Harder timber, a little bit softer timber. I'll go back to that one actually a little bit. The timber. And this is our last one. The timber from deciduous trees. So they give us harder timber. We've already said that. The hardwood timber. It's generally. more valuable, more durable and valuable. And then over here, the softwood timber, this is why we tend to use it a lot, is less durable and cheaper. And the reason it's cheaper is because it can grow in 40 years. So we can grow two and a half trees in the same amount of time that a deciduous tree is growing. Softwood is cheaper, but less durable. And what does durable mean? It means to last. If you said you have a good durable table there, that means it's going to last you for years without getting damaged or falling apart. But less durable. Now, that doesn't mean it's not valuable. It's valuable in its own way. So there's our main reasons, okay? So that is deciduous versus coniferous trees. That's all our differences. Um, I think I've covered everything there. I'm just gonna put in a little bit of a background around my sketches, just to make it look a little bit tidier and not have it look like it's standing just in the middle of nothingness. Okay, so we're giving it a bit of a sky. Do the same with the coniferous. So just to recap very quickly before I finish the video, before I finish the work and give you the jobs to do. Uh, deciduous trees lose their leaves in winter. Coniferous trees don't. They keep their leaves. How do you remember? Coniferous tree, like Christmas, has, has leaves at Christmas because we use it as a Christmas tree. How do you remember about the shapes? The deciduous tree has a rounded kind of a bulb-like shape, uh, whereas the coniferous tree is cone-shaped. Actually, you better write that in. We didn't write that in, no lads, did we? In anything that's not written, as far as I'm concerned, it's not done. It hasn't been mentioned. So coniferous tree, it's a cone, oh, pencil book. Cone shaped. That's where the word comes from. Not sorry, not where the word comes from, but it's how you remember it. So cone shaped. And when I mean cone, I mean, think of a traffic cone. I mean this lad. Okay, that's the kind of shape of it. Okay, where the deciduous is rounded. And actually, before I forget it, the seeds are the, um, yeah, the seeds, what am I talking about? The seeds in a coniferous tree are hep kept or held in a cone. And again, cone coniferous, whereas the seeds in the deciduous could be, they're usually in fruit. Um, When I write held in fruit, what I mean is that they're born in ovaries. So if this was an apple tree, the seeds would be beside an apple. If it was an acorn tree, the seeds are in an acorn. If it was an ash tree, the seeds are in... I oh, can't remember what the ash one is. Hosh chestnut, conquer. Okay. So cone shaped and seeds are held in the cone. And what happens actually with those cones... When you pick them up off the ground, you'll notice that they're all spread out. I'm packing the cone here a few minutes ago because I found it. It didn't get put away with Christmas decorations. It's gone out of my, I can't see it now. It's not my line of sight. Um, but anyway, when they fall, the cone splatters open essentially and splatters all the keys, or because <laughs> that splatters all the keys, um, shakes all the seeds so that they get released and therefore they can go again. 
Okay, so it's easier than going. Anyway, all the other information is there. Last thing I want you to do is go through it, highlighting kind of keywords. What are the words we need to know from everything that we wrote there? So deciduous and coniferous, we know that. Lose there, leaves, lose is a keyword. And by that, I mean, not that you might not know what it means, because you do know what to lose means, but a keyword also helps you remember a topic. So it's a keyword and a topic. If you want to answer a question on this, I'm expecting you to write the word lose. And that's why it's a keyword. Uh, coniferous trees keep their leaves, another key word. Um, hardwood itself is a key word. Softwood is a key word. Okay. Uh, broad leaved or broad leaves is a key word. Uh, needle like leaves. Another key word or key phrase. I suppose I should say. I'm sure we used to that anyway. Some kind of large and bright branches, slow growing, uh, maturity, keyword. It's a very keyword, some of us never reach it, myself included. Um, um, irregular branches, key phrase. And the idea of highlighting keywords is that when you come back and you look at this to study it, the pictures stand out, the keywords stand out, and hopefully then your brain can fill in all the rest. Um, radiate is a key word here. The branches radiate from the trunk. Um, go in every direction. Tends to be symmetrical is a key word, even though I didn't know the opposite of symmetrical. I'll find that out and I'll add it at some point. Hardwood is generally more durable and valuable. Keywords. And cheaper, but less durable. Key phrase. All right, so that's it. So I want you to reproduce that sheet for yourself. I will put a scanned copy of it up with the classwork. Um, and then I want you to photograph your own and submit it through Google Classroom to me, please. So I can have a look at how you're doing and how you're getting on. All right, guys, best luck and I'll talk to you again.